We have a big problem as aquarists, and that is there is stuff which occurs naturally in our aquariums that will kill our fish. Fortunately, there's also a natural solution. Hello everybody, I'm Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dancefish.com, and today we're gonna learn about the nitrogen cycle and how to use it to easily set up a tank, get it stable, and keep our fish healthy and happy. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to like and subscribe, we're trying to grow this channel and your help would be appreciated. Thank you. So what is the nitrogen cycle? Well, basically, it's the process of turning stuff in our aquariums that will kill our fish into stuff in our aquariums that won't kill our fish. So what is this stuff in our aquariums that will kill our fish? Well, the first one, represented by this red light, is ammonia. The Department of Agriculture from the state of Florida has determined that 0 0.05 parts per million, that's like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of ammonia, is enough to damage fish's gills. How does ammonia damage fish? Well, it attacks the cell membrane and it rips the cell membrane apart so the cells insides end up on the cells outsides. Ammonia is a stone cold killer. It straight up destroys biological tissue. The second toxin which naturally occurs in our aquariums is represented by this yellow light, it's nitrite. A nitrite is deadly to fish as well, but a different kind of deadly. What it does is it binds to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the molecule in your blood that carries oxygen throughout your body and makes sure that all your cells have the oxygen they need to survive. When nitrite binds to the hemoglobin, it keeps oxygen from being able to bind to the hemoglobin and the fish basically suffocates from the inside out. Nasty stuff, not a good way to go. And the third toxin which occurs naturally in our aquariums is nitrate represented by this green light. Now nitrate is much less toxic than ammonia and nitrite and it's only toxic at really high concentrations for a lengthy period of time. So how do these toxins get into your aquarium? You didn't put them there. Well, the first one, ammonia, occurs when fish metabolize their food. When fish metabolize protein, a natural byproduct of that process is ammonia. So how does nitrite, our yellow light here, appear in your aquarium? Well, there's bacteria that actually eat ammonia, believe it or not. So these bacteria occur in your aquarium. They start nom nom nomming on the ammonia, and what they poop out is nitrite. So ammonia gets eaten and turned into nitrite. How does nitrate appear? Same kind of process, but it's a different kind of bacteria. Those eat nitrate and they turn it into our green light, nitrite. So that is how we convert ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. And that is known as the nitrogen cycle. So it seems like there's a fairly easy fix to ammonia and nitrite. Just you have bacteria in your aquarium and they take care of the problem for you. That's true, the problem is though, it takes forever for these bacterial populations to get established so they can do their job. According to research conducted at the University of Santa Barbara, California, here's how it would go if you were to set up a brand new aquarium at 79 degrees. After 11 to 12 days, there would finally be enough bacteria that had populated to reduce the ammonia down and turn it into nitrite. But it wouldn't be until day 38 that that second kind of bacteria had populated enough that it had converted all the nitrite to our green light, nitrate. Who wants to wait almost 40 days for the aquarium to get cycled and set up so they can put a bunch of fish in it? Nobody. Well, the aquarium fish industry knows this, so they've got a product to sell you to fix your problem. They'll bottle bacteria that you can add to your aquarium. And back in the 90s, I used this bacteria. I used a product called Cycle which is a bottled form of nitrobacter. I put it in my aquariums and it didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Well, it turns out we had the wrong kind of bacteria in the bottle. You see, since the late 1800s, we've known that bacteria convert ammonia to nitrite then convert that to nitrate. We've known how bacteria perform this nitrogen cycle but we didn't know how they did it in freshwater aquariums. It wasn't until the 1990s that we discovered the right bacteria. There was a lowly graduate student named Timothy Hovenak at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He was also an avid aquarist, and he combined his PhD studies, his, his lab work, with his love of aquariums and found evidence that the bacteria that were performing the nitrogen cycle in our freshwater aquariums was not the one we had thought it had been since the late 1800s. So what the now Dr. Tim did is he used our DNA and he would take the genetic material from the bacteria in his aquariums 
they were doing the nitrification process and analyzed that rDNA and he found out it's not nitrobacter at all. Neither is it any of the other forms of bacteria we thought it was. It's a new kind of bacteria. So that's why the bottled bacteria from back in the day didn't work. It was the wrong stuff. So these days we now know the correct type of bacteria and you can jumpstart your nitrogen cycle and get from red light to yellow light to green light a lot faster if you use the correct bottled bacteria. Dr. Tim sells it. He discovered it, he figured out how to use it and he sells that stuff. Now I'm not affiliated with Dr. Tim. I'm not getting any kind of fee or kickback for doing this. Dr. Tim doesn't know I'm making this video. I just have used his stuff in the past. I know the science behind it and I found it works. So if you're in a hurry, and you want to use his bacteria, it's going to help you out. The problem is there's margin for error when you're using those products. You have to feed that bacteria specific amounts of ammonia. Make sure they have enough food and the colony gets up and running and, and gets stable. And if you mess up, it crashes your whole cycle. I've had that happen. But there is an easy foolproof way to cycle an aquarium and get it up and running and stable enough that you can add fish fairly quickly. Here's how I like to do it. I like to take some media. Let's say this was a sponge filter that was in a nice, established, healthy aquarium. It's going to be full of nitrifying bacteria, full of these beneficial bacteria that I need for the nitrogen cycle. If you notice, there's tons of surface area on a sponge filter. There's all kinds of nooks and crannies. That's because nitrifying bacteria are benthic. They aren't free floating in the water. They're attached to stuff. They need surface area that it can attach to to form their colonies. So you have tons of surface area on a sponge filter. Any kind of biological filtration has tons of surface area. Whether it's your sponge filter, your hang on back filter, your canister filter, your under gravel filter. And that's because we need large amounts of surface area so we can get large amounts of bacteria colonizing them. So taking some gravel or some sponge or a sponge filter from an established aquarium and putting it in your new aquarium is a great way to inoculate that tank with beneficial nitrifying bacteria, but it's not sufficient. Now, if you are a very experienced aquarist, you probably know how to instantly cycle a tank this way and be fine. But for your average person who isn't really experienced with it, it's not a very safe method. And the reason is, because an aquarium is a complex ecosystem with many, many moving parts. Sure, nitrifying bacteria are one important part of that ecosystem, but they're just a small part. So this is a good start, but here is what I do after that, is I put critters in that tank. I put black worms in there. Maybe I put scuds in there, or maybe I use snails, but little critters that I can feed in that tank. They're gonna eat, they're gonna poop, they're gonna create ammonia, the nitrifying bacteria are gonna take that ammonia and turn it into nitrite and nitrate and the cycle is gonna go and be stable. And while that's happening, all the other little microbes that you need for a healthy, sustainable aquarium ecosystem are gonna start getting established. The biofilms, the algaes, all the other stuff. So I like to do that for a week or two before I add fish to a new aquarium. Sure, it's not instant. It takes one or two weeks, but that's a lot quicker than almost 40 days, and it's a much more sustainable environment that is created through that process. So that's what I would recommend we do to quickly and easily set up your nitrifying bacteria, get your nitrogen cycle going, but also help the rest of the ecosystem get established and get balanced. If you wanna learn more about aquariums and aquarium fish, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time here at the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. I'd love to see you there. I would also feel remiss if I didn't thank my customers and my channel members for their support before I signed off. So thank you very much. Until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.